Welcome back to part 6 of our RTS tutorial series. Uh, in part 5, we covered movement, just some movement, and um, when you click on, he will go to the unit and attack him and stop within a certain distance. In part 6, we're going to just iterate upon that and uh, handle things like flashing the unit and passing the damage through the game manager. Cool stuff. So, let's get started. Um, this code is on GitHub. Uh, this is the part 5 branch, so I'm just going to use part 5 for part 6. Um, you'll find the completed part 6 code in uh, GitHub as well as the part 6 branch. So, uh, the only change I've made off, off screen is organize the folders into controllers, helpers, and managers. Um, it was getting a little messy with just like six scripts there, so uh, as we add new ones, this will help us be a little organized. So the first thing we need to do is get, give our units some stats, um, and this is a great chance to dive into script, scriptable objects. Uh, so let me just make a scriptable objects folder, um, and so in here, we're going to make a new C sharp class, and we're going to call it unit stats. Open that up. Okay, we're in our unit stats class. Um, so it's not going to be a monitor behavior, it's going to be a scriptable object. Um, definitely encourage you to research uh, more about scriptable objects. There's a lot of good tutorials out there by like Brackies and things like that. Um, all you need to know is that it's, it's an asset that's really good at storing data um, and can also contain logic, but for now we're just going to use it to contain data. So we are going to make probably public float attack range. This will let our nav agent, this is how we're going to set the nav agent for uh, how the distance for attacking. Um, attack speed, which you can probably guess is how often. Um, we'll probably want a health value. Uh, we won't use it in this tutorial, but we'll probably need it eventually. And we can always add this to this later, so we're probably good now. And one thing we want to do is we're going to use Create Asset Menu. So this will allow us to right-click Create Unit Stats. Um, so I'm going to do Menu Name Equals, and then we're just going to do, we'll put it all under an AI drop-down, so AI and then Unit Stats. Okay, cool. So let's head back into Unity. And once we right-click Create, and we have this new AI over here, and then we'll just do unit stats. And um, let's say we're making warriors right now. So we'll do warrior stats. Uh, and now you can see we have these attack range, attack speed, and health. So let's just give our health 100 for now. Attack speed uh, 2 and attack range will start at 5. And you'll want to make a scriptable object for each type of uh, each different kind of stat. So if you have an enemy warrior that has like different kind of stats, you have like a uh, maybe like a champion warrior, uh, and he'll have different stats. You'd make individual scriptable objects um, for each of those. Uh, and now we're going to work on consuming that. So we're actually going to go into our unit manager, sorry, unit controller. I'm going to open that up, and we're going to have a public so that we can drop this in into the inspector, uh, unit stats, and then we're just going to say unit stats. So now every, every unit controller or anything that inherits from this can have its own type of stats, um, and that will allow it to make you know, any kind of hero you want and things like that. So. So now we can start consuming our unit stats. Um, so right now we currently have, if we if we have a target, keep chasing him. But we want at some point to stop chasing and start attacking. So what we're gonna do is if uh, we're gonna do a little vector math. So we're gonna do we're gonna get the distance uh, of the current target versus the position. So the position, the transform position minus the current targets transform. Well, I think the current target is already transformed, so we'll do position. Uh, and we can't just do this because uh, it will only work for one of like north, south, east, and west. So we want to get the magnitude, and that will give us a hard number distance, and then we can do this magnitude, and so this is the length of this vector. And that way, um, if they're coming from the top, the bottom, the left, or the right, we'll still have this same distance. 
and then we can check if distance is less than or equal to the unit stats attack range. So if they're if they're within their attack range, then we're going to call attack. And we'll go down here and we'll just set a public void attack. And to confirm everything's working, we're just going to run a super quick debug log. And then we'll have attacking. So let's switch back to Unity. And we'll probably have to tweak our units a little bit once it finishes loading. Um, so I know with these nav agents, we set the stopping distance 10, which is kind of a lot. And that's actually more than our warrior's attack range. So let's start with like a 3. Um, click Apply so they all have that. And now we have this player unit controller and unit controller. So right now only the unit controller actually has the unit stats, but we don't want both of these controllers on. Um, so let's let's fix up the player unit controller real quick. Um, and it's just going to inherit from unit controller. And we'll just do this. So it will grab all the things. Right now the player unit is not doing anything different from any other kind of unit. So we're not worried about that here. Um, but for right now, that's what we want, and we're going to tweak our objects really quickly. So now, remove the component, and the player unit component now has that unit stats automatically. I'll click apply. Um, the enemy unit is not a player unit, it is just a unit controller. And we'll just apply it like that. Okay, cool. Um, and so now we can apply this scriptable object, if we click in here, we have your warrior stats, and we can just select that, and click apply, and I think all of them will have it, except for this one. Enemy doesn't really need stats right now, but we'll just throw it in there for now, um, to save on time, and now we can officially test. Okay, cool. So, we go around here, and so when you right-click here, when they get into range, it's attacking, and that's looking good, and it's going to continually attack. So the next thing we want to do is attack speed, which is actually relatively quick. So we'll go into the unit controller, and we will. We actually want to keep track of when the last attack was. So we're going to make a private float called attack timer. You can name this cooldown timer or whatever works within your game. Uh, and in the start, we're going to set the attack timer equal to the unit stats attack speed. So that way, the first attack is always ready to go. And in the update, we're going to have the attack timer, and we're just going to plus equal it to the time, delta time. So it will keep accumulating every, uh, every uh, frame call. And then we're going to go down to attack, and we only want to attack if enough time has elapsed. So attack timer is greater than or equal to unit stats attack speed. Yes. So if the attack speed, enough time has elapsed that it's able to attack again, then we will attack. And we'll just add our debug log attacking in there. Um, and then we also want to set the attack timer to zero to reset the timer. So it'll only attack every, I think we did like two seconds for our warrior. So now we'll quickly test that just to make sure it's happening. Okay, so we'll right click here and attacking and then 34, 36. So or I guess every, uh, yeah, two seconds. So that's going good um, and that's working fine. There seems to be an error that it was giving, um, even though everything worked fine. Um, oh, we forgot to get rid of uh, these other unit controllers that got turned into player unit controllers, so let's just clean that up. Okay, cool. So, don't think we will have any more errors. Let's just confirm. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, cool. So I think the last thing I wanted to cover in this video um, before I start, the next videos will most likely be like UI having a nice little bar up here and, and decrementing the health, is um, just showing uh, flashing 
just having them flash when they get attacked, so it's a little bit more visual. So let's go into the code. And um, instead of handling when we attack, instead of just sending that attack thing to the current target, um, we want to set up like a game manager that handles that attacking, and that way you can... Um, the reason why we want to do it in a game manager is makes it easy to um, offload into the server, add your um, cheat engines if you do it into... Um, if you're doing a multiplayer and, and things like that. So we're going to make a RTS game manager, and generally you want your name game manager I believe if you just do game manager it'll show up as like a it'll override the base unity game manager uh, don't know what that is but for now we'll just call this so in this RTS game manager we actually don't want any of this all we want is we want to keep it mono behavior for now um, if it turns out you don't need this and it's just going to be events or things like that then that's fine but uh, we don't need to start and we're just going to have one method in here called, uh, I think, public void unit take damage. And it's going to take two unit controllers. So it's going to take the attack attacking controller and another controller. And that's the attacked controller. And you can name this whatever you want to make sense in your game. Uh, so this is where you're going to handle all the damage calculations and armor calculations and whatever you need to do that. But for now, all we're going to do is damage is the attacking controllers. Um, I think we, I don't think we actually put a damage in the unit controller's stats. So, uh, well, for now we'll just do unit stats and then damage, even though it's not there. Um, we'll just do attack damage. And then we'll jump into unit stats real quick, and then we'll name. We'll keep it nice and alphabetical. We'll do public float attack damage. Um, there we go. Uh, so now we have now every stat has their own damage, and we'll go into the game manager, and that's looking good. And all we'll do is for the attacked controller. We will send the event, and each game is going to be different depending on how your multiplayer is set up or how your game is set up for now. We're just going to send the attack damage that it took some damage. So we'll say take damage, and we'll send in the damage for now. And we'll probably want to say send in the attacked controller so they know who attacked them, if that matters for your game. For now, we'll do that, and then we will go into the unit controller and create our take damage method. So public void take damage. And I think we took a enemy and we will have a float damage. Okay, cool. Whoops. So I'm actually gonna cheat a little bit and paste in this little snippet that I wrote. Um, all it does is it just iterates <laughs> twice um, and flashes the gray with the default color so it looks like it's like doing a nice little flashing um, you generally see this in games and kind of adds a little bit of juice to the game <laughs> so um, we're gonna start this core routine over here call it flasher and then we're gonna get this components renderer and we're going to pass in the color Render, then we're going to pass in the color, uh, sorry, material color of this. So whatever it is, it's going to flash it with gray and then flash in. So we can see this take damage um, happening. So over here, instead of this debug log, since we know it works, we're going to call RTS Game Manager and we're going to call unit, uh, unit should be unit take public. Let's do static void. Unit take damage. So RTS game manager. Unit take damage. <laughs> and so the attacking controller uh, is this controller. And the attacked controller is our current target, because that's who we're currently targeting. So oh this is the transform, so we actually want to get component unit controller. There we go. 
Uh, there we go. Cool, so this should be working now. So let's quickly go into the game, and we don't need to attach anything. It should work out of the box. And we'll click our guy and right click here, and he's going to go. And when he attacks, the purple is flashing. And that's looking good. <laughs> uh, he's still kind of slamming into the guy, but um, we can deal with that uh, pretty easily later. I think that's just upping the stopping distance a little bit. Um, so, cool. Uh, hopefully, you like this video. We covered flashing and handling damage transfer so now we can easily in the next video we can easily just go you know set our damage and allow health decrementing and things like that which i think we'll handle in the next video uh, so thank you for watching hopefully you guys subscribe to my channel uh, i like making these videos and hopefully you like them too so see you in the next video